Hello and welcome to Sorby Drones Ireland. My name is Wayne Floyd. I'm the Chief Drone Instructor and Examiner for Sorby Drones. I have more than 15 years experience flying drones and today we're going to discuss the difference between the traditional surveying and drone surveying. Drones are a very capable data acquisition tool in the right hands. However, in many specific applications, traditional surveying methods are extremely challenging for drones to match. Operators must be aware of the limitations in delivering quality data and outputs to clients. With that said though, both survey methods have a fantastic benefits. Although they do have some compromises, it is down to you as a competent surveyor to conclude the best solution considering both business and data quality. So what is traditional surveying? Within this context, we take traditional to mean using either total station, GPS or combination of the two to collect topographical information of the area. After this information is collected and processed, the outputs may include the likes of section lines, levels, contours, DTMs and of course general topographical information. The Leica TS-16 total station and the GS-18T receiver are both examples of instruments that are used for this method of surveying. So what is drone surveying? Drone surveying can be broken down into many different phases, but let's look at two key considerations. One the platform and the other the sensor. The platform can be either multi-rotor or fixed wing with the option of a VTOL system, which is a vertical takeoff and landing system. The sensor can be RGB, multi-spectral, thermal or LiDAR with some configurations allowing a combination of two sensors simultaneously such as the DJI L1 sensor. Outputs from the drone surveying may include autophotos, DTMs, contours, high resolution RGBs or thermal inspection imagery and of course the old favourite the 3D point cloud. There's pros with drone surveying which will be the likes of solid accuracy results although not on par with total stations, rapid data acquisition, large coverage areas, autophoto and 3D point clouds included as a standard product of image based operations. Thermal and multispectral surveys, contactless data collection via remote sensing, potentially increasing safety. All right. Some cons compared to the traditional surveying include more reliable and repeatable accuracies as it's an old and tested method, independent of weather conditions, excluding extreme conditions of course, minimal permissions required that may delay some operations as with the drone surveying to fly in certain airspace, the likes of prohibited airspace, you need to get permission from the police before you can get approval from the Irish Aviation Authority. Existing skill sets for members of staff, more discreet and less problematic than drone drones for properties that might be neighbouring the site. Topographical line work already drawn before office processing. So my honest opinion is, it is probably fair to say that most dis discussions on this topic will promote the immense and infinity capabilities of drone surveying. Here we take a look at some of the key benefits mentioned above and compare them side by side, looking at some of the more mundane day-to-day -day challenges between the two methods. Accuracy. It's best achieved in terms of survey methods. Nothing will beat the accuracy of a traverse survey that is performed and adjusted correctly. For projects requiring the highest level of accuracy, drones are realistically a non-runner. If the tightest tolerance are not required, only then can you use the drone as a surveying workflow. The absolute best results any drone can realistically achieve today are more or less on par with RTK GNSS. This is to say about plus or minus 25 mil. However, achieving that requires great levels of care with adequate control and quality checks. This accuracy can easily slip well past plus or minus 50 mil for larger scale projects. The best accuracy we have ever achieved is 7 mil of an overall project. Now this was on a hard surface, it was planned and executed with precision. Photogrammetry based surveys have one major issue within the discussion of accuracy and that is soft ground. If the ground is obscured by heavy vegetation or often light vegetation, it will almost be impossible and certainly not reliable to tell the level of the ground. This may be a small issue as it could be an isolated pocket on site. So immediately with photogrammetry, the accuracy has been blown out of the water. Photogrammetry will generate a DSM from the point cloud at the top of this half a meter grass and will give no indication of the accurate ground level for areas covered by vegetation. Ground control points will help with this in these areas. In this scenario, even LiDAR 
with its increasing ground penetrating capabilities will fail to beat a surveyor and a pole to verify the correct ground level is being measured. It is down to the surveyor to select which method makes the most sense relating to the output and the accuracy required. Having said this, LiDAR does not have a huge advantage over photogrammetry based surveys in lighter vegetation once good point cloud filtering is applied. The best way to visualize LiDAR is when you are standing underneath a tree and it's raining. The, the raindrops that manage to get through the tree without touching the foliage is similar to the laser points collected by the LiDAR. Speed and coverage. This is the greatest commercial advantage drone surveying has over traditional surveying. With a drone solution, vast areas of fields, quarries and roads could be surveyed in a day, compared to several days of crews using traditional methods. One major consideration is the office to site balance with remote sensing methods such as terrestrial laser scanning and aerial su surveying. It is often the case that huge quantities of line work will have to be extracted from the point cloud in the office. Compared to this, traditional survey methods where the line work is automatically being drawn on site and will only have to be cleaned before being really brought to delivery to the client. Many of the cost benefits associated with the more rapid data collection on site can be mitigated with extensive office based work. This issue is particularly present with topographical surveying. Days saved on site may simply result in days pushed back into the office. This is not to say that it's wrong, the wrong option but most definitely a consideration when assessing the overall speed at which the survey is completed and delivered. So it comes back down to two things now. Do we have boots in the ground or do we use wings to be able to capture the correct way to do surveying? Ultimately it comes down to the balance of several factors discussed in this vi video with some of the main considerations, but there will always be a trade-off which needs to balance accuracy and financial sense. It may be a set best to use a combination of both drone surveying with traditional methods. This is more likely going to achieve the best results on many projects. Drones are a fantastic tool for surveying, however it is essential to remember that not a one size fits all solution. An operator should strive to present honest and accurate data to the client. This is the duty of care that is expected and required of the survey industry and if compromised on a large scale will undermine some of the great works of surveyors. Listen, we'll talk to you again soon on our next video. Thanks very much. Good luck.